So many, so many things. So many things that uh, concerns everybody. Family, relationship, as long as it has to do with relationship, whether you're married or not, uh, with family, we talk about it. That's why today we're talking about uh, something that uh, most people are not aware of, and uh, it's a very big issue. It has to do with F, and that is why today we have a doctor in the house. Uh, right soon, you get, you'll be listening to the doctor. We're talking about dyslexia. Uh, a lot of people, uh, when you mention that, they ask you, well, what's that? What's that? Well, you will you, you will be shocked to know that uh, even some doctors, when you mention it, they're like, what are you saying? What are you? They are not sure. And not talk of parents, not to talk of teachers. And this condition affects one in, one in five kids. Uh, it's not just uh, in the U.S. or uh, it's everywhere. Uh, in a class, in every classroom, you find three to four dyslexics in every classroom uh, and teachers will call them uh, lazy they call them dumb they call them sometimes it affects the low self-esteem of, of these kids and even parents some dad to say ah, yeah hello joy yeah hello jory yeah hello cool uh, the doctor will explain to you uh, what this lesson means uh, but in layman term is uh, a general term for these others that involve difficulty in learning to read or interpret words, letters, and other symbols. But it does not affect the general intelligence. That means you could have dyslexia and be smart. And that is why today on the show, one of the things we'll be doing is to let you know great people who have dyslexia while they were growing up, you'll be shocked and they grew up into great people. Let's put it to you, let's say, uh, in layman term, for people to understand, for kids who are listening, uh, and for parents, especially parents and teachers. Teacher. Why I'm saying this is that uh, another statistic says that in Nigeria, 98% of teachers are not even aware that there's anything called dyslexia. That means only 2% of teachers have ever heard of it. They, are, they have never, 98% have never heard of it. So this is a big issue. How would you explain it in layman term to parents and teachers who are listening now? Right now. Uh, dyslexia is a neurological condition and more often a genetic condition. And when we are talking about neurological condition, we are talking based on the brain. So this problem is with the brain. The condition affects the brain. And this condition results in making the child to be very difficult to read, to write. Some of them, they cannot even spell some of them to to pick up pencil to even write is it's very difficult. very difficult for them so they have difficulty in interpreting what they, they have difficulty for the brain to interpret what the high sees hmm. and that is sometimes very very I've difficult. Had cases, sorry doctor i've had cases of kids saying uh alphabet letters are dancing yeah. <laughs> that they see letters dancing. Some of them, they even think that they, that they have problem with their eyes, that they are trying to read letters from the from the back. Yeah, but bed could be deaf. <laughs> so, so that that is not is not problem with visuals, as we have said. It's not problem with hearing. It's not problem with no. Maybe they are mentally retarded, or it doesn't affect their intelligence. It's just that there is a disconnection from the control center in the brain that controls the learning, the writing, and the reading. Hmm. So that's actually the, 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 the problem. Dr. Arela, let me ask you, almost 10 years of practicing, have you ever found, have you found a child suffering or have you treated any of such child? Uh, I, I would say no. Though there is no, though no real treatment for them, there is no yeah, medical uh, treatment. The ones that would be, I think it's for life. Yeah, yeah, it's for life. It's just that we we'll support them, we we'll give them maximum support, and anything 
maybe they are having problem with speech, with reading, we get specialists to help them. So in my years of experience, I have never in, laid in, hand in a country on any child. But, but, but we should have it at the back of our mind that men, this problem is, the child is the one that will notice first. The parents also notice. So it's not left for them to bring their child. What if they notice and they do not know what is like wrong? Yes, that is that, that is. that's the greatest problem. That's the teachers don't even know. They tend to isolate such kids in their class. Yes. Say, oh, no, lay. Well, I, joke, say, I even have a woman that said that when she was growing up, her class, her table and chair is by the door. <laughs> and they will tell her, girl, if I give you assignment and you are not getting it, I saw that I get, you are on your way out. So imagine what will happen to that girl at the end of her life, or academy-wise. So the, 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 the problem is for the parent to recognize, for the teacher to identify them, and to bring them forward. Let me ask you a question. Uh, there's a statistics that says that uh, in a population, in every population, uh, 15 to 20% of people are dyslexic, and a higher percentage of these uh, would definitely be kids. Now, in a country like Nigeria, we have an estimated population of 200 million. 20% of that is around 20 million. <laughs> now, when you, uh, I mean, it's around 40 million. When you now say, uh, uh, in a country where there is no, there are no really, uh, no diagnosis, uh, 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 or maybe let me put it to you, would you say there are enough uh, ways to diagnose this in Nigeria? Because I, I, I listened to a rich man who said, you have to take his kid to the U.S., uh, th that was what I said the other time that the, 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 the problem, the approach to solving this problem is multidisciplinary. Okay. So the teachers have to be involved, the parents have to be involved, the, the speech therapists, the, the, the child psychologists have to be involved. So everybody must come out. So it's, it, the, the, the problem is that we've not really had exposure or advocacy to really open up this problem. Let people know. Many people are dropping out of school. And why? We should go down. Why are they dropping out of school? Many people are not interested to go to school. They want to go and do something else. Why are they not interested? Because those are the problem. Please should... And, and sometimes, it, it, just like we say, it could live, live with you till you, you come out. Some people, they are 15, 16 year old, they can't still write their names correctly. Yes. So all those ones, they become aggressive. By the time you are telling them, this is what you, eh, I'm old enough to know what to write. They will become aggressive. They want to defend themselves. They will lose interest in school, anything related to school activities. And people and will think they're lazy. People will think they are lazy. People will think, ah, this one, ah, you don't want to do anything in life. That's why you are behaving like this. Not knowing that there is a problem that is yet to be discovered in the life of such children. Okay, uh, wh what would you, who would you now blame if uh, it is a condition that is with us, uh, it's a reality, and one in five kids have it, and yet most parents, and uh, ninety-eight percent of teachers in Nigeria, uh, in Nigeria are not aware of it, and government seems not to be doing anything about it. Who would you blame? What do you think can be done? First of all, Dimitri, I think before we even go to government, government is like the third party in this whole thing. I think it's just parents, teachers, I think they are the key people in this. Government is not the third party money. Why I'm saying this? Government is not the third In every society, everybody is the responsibility of government. Why Why is government taking care of people with cancer, with uh, why are they, why are they uh, treatment for those with uh, sickle cell anemia and all of that? That's what that's what I'm trying to say. That when Doctor Arella was explaining, he was explaining that people do not even come to the hospital to say because they don't know. That's what I'm saying. Who creates the awareness? That's my question. Okay. Yes, they, they don't create the awareness. They, they don't know. Who should but, create the awareness? But at least if you have any problem, you should be able to come out. And that's why I was telling her, Doctor. Don't, people, don't, with, Doctor, just a minute. Okay. If you say if you have any problem, if it is malaria, you could say, oh, I'm feeling some headache, uh, I have fever. Oh, now you don't have fever. It, it's just a kid who is not, it's just a kid who is not learning as fast as it should. Most people would not see it as a serious problem. They would say, maybe the child is lazy, just as you said, or dumb. So what I'm asking is, who do you think should create the awareness in this kind of situation? Yeah, I, I think 
every one of us together we have to create the awareness the parents have because i remember that woman there is a woman that gave that testimony she said she knew she had the problem and immediately she will struggle out of the problem immediately she noticed that the third child was having the problem she spoke out she did the advocacy for the child she ran out you no know, run up and down for support so that they can really identify this problem and they should see a way of solving it and as we have said before that this problem starts from school even sometimes it starts from the mother with the mother the mother will notice ah this child she can't pronounce things she can't know papa she can't say papa she can't say mama ah you are two years now you should be able to say this so some of them they they have difficulty in learning language some of them they, 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 they have difficulty in pronouncing things. And that is where parents should come out. So it's not only uh, I'm going to the hospital to go and treat malaria. I'm going to the hospital to go and treat up our spiritual activation. But, but the, the issue also is that some parents do not even spend time with their children. Some parents tell, they, tell, they, they leave their children in the hands of uh, probably the house help. And then they, don't, they go in the morning, come back at night. They don't know what's happening with their kids. They don't want to, not like they don't care, but they say that we also have to make money that you spend, you know. So now, we're not shifting it from the parents because th this, is, this is your primary responsibility. You need to take care of your children. But then, how do you, how can you, um, what's the word now? How can you pick, pick, pick it out to say, this is the first thing you should identify in knowing that your child is dys dyslexic? Yes, there are symptoms, there are signs that we can pick from a child that is having dyslexia. Uh, the, some of them, as we have said the other time, there are so many things that they will put forward. Some of them, there is the teacher that we notice is for that, okay, they have delayed early language development. Some of them, they are slow in learning new words. Some of them, they have difficulty in copying from the word, from the board, even from book. From the, another book, okay, write this, copy from another book. They have difficulty in doing that. Some of them, they struggle to say with what they want to say. They don't have actual words to express their thoughts. Those are the things that we see in them. And what are the signs that some other people can see, maybe the, the specialist can see? They are withdrawn. You will see them. They don't want to relate with others. They appear depressed. They have problems with self-esteem. They, they, they lack confidence in themselves. They will believe that ah, others can do this. For me, I can't do this. What is the problem with me? So some of them, they, 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 they lose interest in school-related activities. By the time your child is telling you, ah, I'm not going to school today, you have to find out what is the problem. What is the problem? Is somebody harassing you in school? Is it that you are losing interest in what you are doing? So those are the signs and symptoms that we can pick from a child that is having dyslexia. Uh, 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 are some of them also hyperactive? Stay on their own, play on their own, talk to themselves? Mm, yes, there are some other conditions that dyslexia occurs, like attention, deficit, hyperactivity ADD. disorder. Yes. Some of them, some percentage of them have have dyslexia. So we, and that is why we, 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 we say that if you are evaluating a child with dyslexia, you have to really go deep and no, evaluate the child, assess the intelligence, assess the visual, the motor, the sensory, uh, as, assess uh, academic performance, you no know, communication. So we should be able to rule out every other problem because all these other disorders, they have their own treatment. Mm. So if you can rule out all other problems, it's not that the child had a uh, bad asphyxia at birth and is now posing problem now. Maybe there is actually mental retardation and delay developmental milestone you no know, from all those insults to the to the, to the insults to the brain right from birth so you have to rule all those problems out before you come out to say okay actually this child is having dyslexia now for, for parents who ski examine uh, you've talked about how to identify this how would you advise them to deal with it yes in every the, the kid to overcome it and for teachers as well yes for parents whose kids have it Number one, they have to be able to identify first. They bring out the child because we have the, 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 the management is multidisciplinary. 
we have speech therapy maybe they are having problem with their speech we have no uh, reading specialists we have no uh, psychologists that we assess that we help then we, we even have some expert teachers that they are this is their field they will be able to take care of those children. so the, the, if you identify it you must not stay at home you must not keep it to yourself we should remember that this our country is a this our country is a is a development country so we should we should know that first so <laughs> talk to your child this is uh find out if the child is confused or not when you give the child instruction or commands you should find out uh, whether the child is confused or not, because oftentimes it's not that they don't get it; they get it. Their brain interprets it differently. Yes, they get it. So you have to find out and talk to them. Read with your child. Yes. that's another thing. Read with them, yes. and then when you read with them, find out if they understand what you're reading. Uh, then can you can your child sound out words? Can they pronounce words correctly and all of that? Then number four, did your child understand what they just read? So you need to find out as a parent. Then observe your child's writing so you have to write with your child know that some of them don't get some letters know what the problem is identify the particular problem because dyslexia i also find on the internet that uh there are different types of it yes there are there different are types different types. so you want you we have you, the primary type the secondary type there is visual there is dysgraphia you no know, we have different types so uh doctor let me quickly ask you uh in in trying to catch it early uh, is it is it more beneficial to do that advantageous to the child to catch it early or wait till the child grows maybe uh, older than ten or eleven? No, Which no, one is it, better? It is beneficial to identify that problem, the condition or time, because learning starts as the child is is working. Learning starts and they put the child in kg one, kg two, kg three. So we can't wait till ten years. And there is the brain is also developing, is what you put inside the brain that the brain will also reach produce. So if you don't identify them early and to tackle the problem, it, it, the child will have a lot of challenges to battle with in life. One of the things that uh, people have said uh, all over the world is trying to lay their finger out on what could be the cause or causes of dyslexia. Uh, like I've said earlier, some, some dads will say, uh, Yeah, hello, Joe. Take after your mom. I'm um, brilliant. Some some mother will say, Ah, I'm a family baby. I love I'm a lori one daughter. Now, uh, are there causes for this? Okay. The, the the first thing is that we should we should educate these parents and make them to know that this problem is not mental retardation. It's no problem maybe with de deformity of the brain. They should know them. They should know that. But at the same time, there is no no cause to this condition but with their actual factors like family history they discover that the about 40 percent of siblings of kids that have it the, the, the child will have it at the end of the day they they, they, they also discover that 49 percent of parents that had this problem the, the kids also they they have high chances you no know, of of having it they apart from that they are also because we have different types, we have the primary type, that one is more of hereditary. So if the parent is having it, there's higher chances that the child will have it. Then the second tri the secondary, which is more of developmental, there are some insults, injury to the brain, why the child is developing, why the fetal, the, the, the baby is developing in the womb. In the womb right? So if there is exposure to alcohol, exposure to nicotine, exposure to infections, or some drugs, or some drugs, on precise drugs, all those drugs they can have effect on the brain, the part of the brain that controls learning, that controls writing and spelling, and every, all those learning skills. And at the end of the day, they will present with dyslexia. All right, Doctor Ariella, before we take a break, I want to ask: is, is there a point where you get, if you like, you were saying that you must um, attend to this at the early stage? If for uh, a parent cannot do, do anything again to recover that child or to get that child back on track. We, 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 in the management, 
is more of supportive management. You want to identify the weakness and the strength of the child. And you want to use that strength to help the child you know, to grow. So it is something that is with you is a lifelong brain you know, based condition. So it's something that is with that child as the child grows up, even into adults. As you have said that you gave example of some artists that they even is had. There a point? Is there a point, doctor? Maybe that's what Moni is trying to say. Is okay. there a point where it is irredeemable? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that. Maybe, maybe when uh, maybe if we become a teenager or maybe if you're an adult. We, we, we know that it's not it, presentation differs. A child that is not, they didn't pick in the early life, they can pick when the child is in secondary, because we have some of them in high school, in secondary school, and that is where they will pick them. So if we can really go out to support them, to give them the support team that Who is needed. Who are the we? Yeah. The, the, parents, okay. the parents are involved. The teachers are also involved. The teacher must not I know there is a neglect group called uh, Dyslexia Nigeria. And there's Dyslexia International. Yes. Those are the... But, but it's in Lagos. Unfortunately, <laughs> Ondo and uh, Kiti or places like that are far from Lagos. <laughs> but at least we have online community now. We have people that can reach out through WhatsApp. We have people Some of these parents are not educated. <laughs> That's why I said earlier, when you look at ministries of education, the way they are configured in the Federal, uh, Federal, Federal Ministry of Education and even in the States, the way they are configured... Uh, would you suggest a specialized department for this condition? Yes, advocacy is very, very important. So, and if you are talking about advocacy, they have to create space for them also to thrive. So, if we, we they know that this is a problem that is with us, and we have to find something to do about it. It will go a long way to help now, such children. And, and what about kids who are dyslexic and yet they are gifted? Because most, most dyslexic, uh, you, you find out that they have, they have a gift. They have a certain gift that if the community or their parent can let them identify, they are very creative people. Yeah. They are very creative people. We, we, we said it that this dyslexia is, is not a problem associated with mental retardation or visual problem or motor neural problem. But, and it, doesn't, it does not affect their intelligence. They are smart. They are good. No. But most of them are smarter. Yes. Not yes. They, they, they see things they, differently. They, they, they shine. They it, think creatively. Yes. They become experts. They become matters, actors that are, no, that are good. So the problem is not with their intelligence. That is the thing. It is not with their intelligence. It's not a mental retardation problem. So, But the problem is just for them. The, the problem is that they are having disconnection in the way they see things and the way they will interpret it. The brain cannot really interpret what they are seeing. The brain cannot you know, interpret, you know, the, the brain controls all the parts of the body. If you want to eat, <laughs> the brain, okay, the mouth can open and If I the brain that will interpret your hunger for you. Yes! So, brain, so the, the problem is with that center that controls learning and writing, spelling. So, if there is disconnection, that's where the problem Okay, you've heard it from the expert, from the doctor. He said it. Don't say your child is dumb. Don't say it's stupid. Don't say it's lazy. Yes. And for teachers who say, uh, put me in your class is stupid or lazy, find out. Like we said, 98% of teachers in Nigeria have never heard of dyslexia. Uh, we'll take a break now. Let's listen to somebody who had dyslexia, uh, who still have it. But one of the greatest uh, actors out of uh, Hollywood, uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Uh, if you've seen the movie Sarafina, you would know the person I'm talking about. Let's listen to her. Well, it was nice to know that, that I wasn't just lazy and that uh, I didn't have to sort of explain to people anymore that it wasn't that I, I didn't want to do it. It was just that I was having a hard time because, you know, back in the olden days, they just assumed that you were just lazy and stupid, stupid and, and all these other things. But the thing that crushed me more than anything was... I didn't understand how they didn't see that I was smart. I just couldn't figure things the way they were doing it. Were you ever uh, made fun of as a child in school? Yes, but not because I couldn't keep up. 
but because I was sort of odd, I was a little bit strange. You know, when you're eight or nine, it seems odd to other people, as opposed to just, oh, it's a little different. What was uh, your support system like growing up? My mom, you know, she would say to me, you know, Karen, I get this, because if I tell you, you understand it. I don't know what what it is you have or don't have, but it's not something that's going to freak me out. Do you think it runs in the family a little bit? I think it does now, but as far as we can tell, nobody else has it but me. Do you think your dyslexia got you to where you are today? I'm sure it had a, a, large, a large hand in it, yeah. And the fact that since I was born, uh, I've always known I wanted to pretend to put myself in other time periods, to be able to pretend to be another species. I mean, that stuff to me is interesting and, and it helps my mind expand. Sure. Yeah, it's our way of escaping the real life, but I yes. think normal people can't really do that. They have a harder time. I think they have a very hard time. I feel bad for them. I, I kind of do too. <laughs> you, know, you know, I didn't know until... <laughs> I guess a year or two ago when they asked me to come to 30 Rock. I had no idea there was anything called an EGOT. I, I just knew the stuff was a thousand. And uh, then people started saying, oh, that's a big deal. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. You started out as a comedian, correct? No, I started out as a straight actor. Oh, a straight and actor. I couldn't get any work because people would look and I'd go try to do some Shakespeare and they go, I, 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 what are you here for? And I'd say, well, uh, I like to audition for them. They go, no, 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 no. Next. <laughs> so I wrote a whole bunch of stuff mm -hmm. for me to do so I could show people what I was capable of. And that sort of kicked everything off. What would you say is the most challenging part of having dyslexia and what advantages do you think it has given you? I think the advantage is my brain sees and puts information in my head differently. Sometimes more interestingly, I think, than, than if I saw like everyone else. I think it's less challenging now because we have some idea about it. But I think the challenge will always be how we see ourselves. Not as folks with a handicap, but folks with an interesting perspective on everything. Sure. You know. What advice would you give to a who has a child and then their child has just been diagnosed with dyslexia. Stop trying to find a reason that it happened. There is no, we don't know why it happened. So it's not your fault. So let that go and start paying attention. So you can understand that I do things differently. You have to pay attention to see how I'm doing stuff. If you tell me all kinds of stuff and I, mem I know it from memory, that's a big deal. Don't, don't say, oh, you're, you're not getting it. They are getting it. You have to pay attention. Parents, pay attention. They don't call them stupid. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, of all the people that uh, I got to know that had a business, or still had a business, that would be good for you. One person that I couldn't believe. Great actress. And she's not just the only one. You'll be shocked. Former UK Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, one of the greatest, had dyslexia. And he said, let me... Let me let me read him to you. I was on the whole considerably discouraged by my school days. It was not pleasant to feel oneself so completely outclassed and left behind at the beginning of the race. And George W. Bush, so many of them, Thomas Edison who created light bulb and uh, motion camera, so many of them, so many of them. In fact, the man who, uh, I don't know if you've read the book from uh, Third World to the Third World, Lin Kuan Yong, the man who transformed the whole of Singapore. He, he had this, this lesson, and he did not even know until uh, uh, he, he was already a prime minister before he knew he was diagnosed by his daughter who was a neurologist let me let me read him to you uh, when I did a course on speed reading and I did not succeed not because I was stupid but because I usually have to run my eye back make sure I got the right word that slows me down but because I read more slowly I read only once and it sticks so there are compensations the important thing is not to be discouraged and feel that I am disabled no Leonardo da Vinci was dyslexic. So what? He was a great artist, sculptor, painter, thinker. So I'm not comparing myself to him. But if he can overcome dyslexia, fortunately, 
I overcame it without my knowing it. That's Lin Kuan Yong, one of the greatest men that uh, uh, he, he transformed Singapore. So, if your child has it, don't say it's stupid, don't say it's dumb. He could turn out to be the greatest. We've mentioned names like Winston Churchill, like uh, even Steve Jobs, let's Steve Jobs, who created Apple. Uh, you use Apple, all this Apple product and all of that. Uh, he had it as well. Uh, Thomas said, Apple Einstein, you'll be shocked. The, the father of modern physics I had it while growing up. And so these are great men and they turn out well. And like Wopi Guba said, just pay attention. As parent, as a teacher, pay attention. Minutes before two, it still pings love and family. On the right, it when I have him, I will talk him. One of the names that I forgot to mention the other time, money, uh, Anderson Cooper of CNN. Yeah. If you've seen the program, Anderson Cooper 360, next time you're watching that program on CNN, that's a man who has dyslexia. And he said it inspired him, influenced him to become a war correspondent. That he reflects the way he tells his stories. And that's why we're saying that. People with dyslexia are creative. They they think creatively. They see things differently. Imagine what we go back. Uh, uh, it, it, this, dyslexics, we say they can hardly read. But imagine an actress. She has to read that script, cram it, and and make it work. And she she's one of the greatest that has ever come out of Hollywood. So these people are not dumb. They are not stupid. So if your teacher stop saying that child in your class is stupid, he's not stupid. He's not dumb. He just sees things differently. And that's what we're saying, that in every class, you find three to four dyslexics in your class. Just treat them, pay more attention to them. They need specialized training. Uh, for the uh, parents, pay attention to them as well. 
At this point, we'll open the port for people to call. All right, the numbers to call 0816-251-9991. Again, 0816-251-9991. And 0908-177-8793. 0908 Those are the two numbers that you can call and we'll be here. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, Hello. good afternoon. Hello. Okay, uh, looks like. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I don't know what's happening, but uh, just keep trying. 0816 251 9991. Okay, I think there's another call coming through. Uh, okay, there's all. Keep track. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. 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 Good, good afternoon. Clemens, thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Okay, we lost that call. Please, when you're calling, move away from your radio set so we can hear you clearly. Hello, good afternoon. Numbers are oh now eight one seven seven eight seven nine three and oh eight one six two five one nine 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 or eight one six two five one nine 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 one. Those are the numbers to call. Hello. Uh, you Good have afternoon. The, okay. Hello, we can hear you. Hello. Okay. Uh, Imagine yeah, I don't know what's happening with the lines, uh, but just keep trying. Probably the network. Keep trying. We're here. Two minutes before two o'clock, and we're still talking. To Hello, good afternoon. Please move away from your radio set. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's the name? Aki Dudire from Okitikupa. Thank you for joining us. Please go ahead. I have to commend Adapa for this problem which is battling many parents. I am one of these problems. My daughter was in JSS3 at a certain time. That is about 20 years ago. She came to me that she cannot continue with education. I have to ah, find out why. But later, I asked her to go for Taylor. Today, she is a big seamstress. And I have other three siblings that are medical doctors, engineers. I am a retired teacher. I shall be very, very happy if this type of program can be brought into the public. Because many parents are suffering this illness, this as you see. And we don't know. I thank Adaba for this topic. Many parents have the problem. So I appeal to the Ministry of Education to give teachers induction course on this problem. Because it's affecting many pupils in the classroom not in the primary school alone, even in the secondary school, that may, many of these dropouts drop out of educational progress. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so much uh, like what is said, we mentioned uh, Lagos the other time. Uh, Lagos is one place where there's, uh, the, the group is called Dyslexia Nigeria, and they go around schools teaching teachers uh, but it's expensive teaching teachers on how to uh, deal with kids like this. And like I said,
to teachers and to talk to parents as well. I believe this is the responsibility of government. Uh, people focus too much on cases like uh, cancer, like sickle cell, like gender violence, and all of that. So unfortunately, this, uh, these kids are the future of Nigeria. Uh, they are future leaders. Nobody is really paying attention to these kids, and it's sad. If one in five kids have dyslexia, uh, one in five kids has dyslexia, uh, and 20% uh, of every population has it, and nobody is uh, doing anything, it's so sad. All right, so that's where government comes in. Yes. Uh, and, uh, of course, we cannot but hope for the best in this area. Okay, we can still take more calls. So, eight one six two five one nine 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 one oh nine oh eight one seven seven eight seven nine three. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Might as well. Just keep trying. Uh, oh, now, 817793 and 0816 Oh, That's the number. Please move away from your radio set. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. What's the name, please? Uh, Mr. Sartre from Thank you for joining us. Please go ahead. Uh, how can I get the address of the program? We'll put it. We'll put it on the Dubai FM's uh, Facebook page. We'll, uh, we'll do huh? that. We'll, we'll put it on the Dubai FM's uh, Facebook page immediately after the program. Okay. We'll put the address there. Yeah. Okay. It's obvious that a lot of people need information as we can. Because it's, like, uh, it's real. It's with us. One in five kicks. That's that's big number. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, please turn down the volume of your radio set. If you must call, um, step away from your radio set or you turn down completely uh, the volume. 0816 251 And uh, 0-9-8-1-7-7-8-7-9-3. Those are the numbers that will get you through to us in the studio here. Uh, okay. There's another calendar. Hello. Hello. Hello? Hello? Maybe we'll just uh, take uh, one or two more calls and we'll see. Uh, okay, 0816251999. Hello? 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 Please, your name and where you're calling from? Uh, my name is Adido. Adido, where are you calling from? Please? Calling from Akure. Okay, Adido, you from Akure. So, wh wh what's your take on uh, this last year? Uh, I think. A lot of people are suffering from from that, and they don't even know it. But I think maybe the government should try and social awareness. Maybe create a body that will be in charge of that to enlighten more about that. Actually, the way I'm even thinking of it, maybe maybe I might be one of them. I don't know <laughs> because I have been caught to growing up when I was in primary, secondary school. I can hardly read. So things get better over time. But we find it difficult. Did, did anybody call you lazy or stupid? No, no, no. That is a normal thing people do. Even teachers. Teachers will beat you because probably you can't pronounce or you can't spell or you can't get something right. But so, they don't see the other part that you are good at. Hmm. Because when it comes to creativity, yeah. once I see you do something, you anything, just do anything once on me. I will just I will get this one. Yeah, I know, but, but boy, if you, if you sing any song, you, we will remember for life. And it's disgusting. Anything, <laughs> anything. Even uh, right now, I'm actually into fashion, which I don't even like. Hmm. I finished from tonight, and I find it difficult getting a job. So I have to sit down at home and think of what I can do. And I come up with the idea of doing. I'm actually an artist. I can draw. Hmm. And I pick up my table. You will not be the first one. Leonardo da Vinci is also was dyslexic and it was one of the greatest artists that I ever knew. Yes, I know. I know about, I know about Leonardo da Vinci. I want to say a lot. In fact, it's one of my best nights. You can definitely visit that about the YouTube page uh, to once again watch uh, and listen uh, to the whole program. Uh, we must say a very big thank you to Dr. Timmy Topway Ariola for coming on the show. Uh, Your final words. You, you want to say something to government as you got what you can do to help or to help people with dyslexia? Uh, we, I want to say advocacy is 
very very important we should try and help these people house they are there in the population and living school so